All right, here it go, man. What's happening, man? It's your boy, Louis Bell. It's the Cali Kickback, you understand me? As y'all can see, I got a motherfucking legend in the building, you understand me? It's an honor for him to be here, you feel me? He trying to act all like he don't know what's going on, man. But we gonna introduce him right, man, you understand me? You done seen him on all type of... You just seen him on Netflix with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Come on, stop playing. You done seen him on Life. You done seen him... <laughs> what? You done seen him on, uh, what's, what's, Fat Tuesdays? The documentary. Mm -hmm. Amazon? Yes, sir. Come on, stop playing. Let's give a big round of applause for the guy Tory in the building, man. Ooh. Guy Tory. All right, we're going to hear the claps in the back. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We got Keisha E in the building, too. Detroit in the building. <laughs> no, give me that same energy. Okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> right, right. Right. Give her her due. Right. Yes. Right. We got Keisha E all the way from, from the D. That's got to be your slogan. <laughs> He should eat from the D. From the D. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Here with some real peas. Yeah. I'm talking about it's yeah. the cat. How you feeling, Keisha? I'm here. I'm you good. Here? I'm How good. you feeling? I'm good. Words right. have power. I'm fantastic. There you go. There you go. You, you, you well, you you're hiding it well because you look great. So <laughs> you gotta feel great. That's how you know people going yeah. through something when they when a black person. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I woke up this morning like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> What's going on? What didn't happen? Who your didn't name sound like you got broke your heart? <laughs> Keisha. Who didn't left you? That Keisha. Thing, why I gotta be that? What audition did, did you book? Did Keisha Cole make your name sound toxic? Um, I mean, no, I think it was long. It was already. It, was already, it, already, it already had. Can you make Keisha feel that name toxic for years? It already had. Every that. black go-to name is Keisha it or Shamika, was it Sha Sha Shaquilla or Shamika, whatever. Um, and I'm a different kind of Keisha. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? You a different. Somebody tell me I should be I should be the poster girl for Keisha. I should be the new. Well, yeah. So and what what is that different type of Keisha then? Since you said well, that, well, just not the stereotype because people literally when you say your name is Keisha, they right. have this stereotype of you of like, like you a wig baby or something. Yeah, and I'm like I come from a two parent <laughs> household. I have a master's degree. <laughs> I've been in 23 countries. I'm well traveled. I ain't got no baby daddies. Yeah, Keisha's like, ain't been out the not country. Not all the things that people <laughs> no. think. They've been in the county, but not <laughs> out the country. Keisha's only go to Atlanta and Texas. Right. The farthest they Miami, Miami, <laughs> Miami. They, yeah, they go, Keisha's go to Miami. Go to Miami. Think, Keisha's go to Miami. Miami. Just go to Miami now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In Vegas. <laughs> Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Guy. I never so, met a guy. Really? Well, Hell it's good. Nah. good. Your yeah. name is Guy. I, it's Gee doing hockey season. I go Gee, Gee. That's your real name, though. Guy. Huh? Guy's my real name. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Guy Tory. Yeah, named after my dad. So oh. it's on my birth certificate, on my driver's license, on my taxes. We got that in common. <laughs> All the real niggas named yeah, after their daddy. daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's why me and my brother got probably these new names. You know, my brother's older. He didn't get named after my dad, so maybe that's where that our happened to my little brother in. too. My big brother, my little brother. What? He, he skipped. He skipped a couple. Yeah, of sons. my little brother is a junior, not my big brother. Got it. Oh, for real? Yeah, because my mama didn't want to name my daddy named Bernard. She's like, I'm not naming my kid Bernard. Man, after a dog. So she was like, I'm not <laughs> Saint Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an older name. It is an old ass name. So that's then OG. when they had my little brother, they didn't check the sex. Right, but my mama felt in her spirit it was a girl. You know how they say your belly high as a girl if it's low yeah, as a boy, whatever. Uh -huh. And so she thought it was a girl, so she promised, like, all right, we can name it after you, just thinking she being slick. Right. And it was a boy, and it was like, all right, you gotta keep your word. Bernard. So, so now he's got a Bernard born in 1990. Ooh. Woo! <laughs> I got Ooh. an old ass name, Lewis. Yeah, it is old ass. That's, old, that's like a civil rights like name. Common. That's a civil rights name right Lewis, there. It ain't no, it ain't no, it ain't a lot of Lewises. <laughs> no. L-E-W-I-S? Right. Yeah, I was cool with a couple of Lewises. But Detroit got all type of old nigga names out there. Old Oakland, nigga Detroit, names. it's a bunch of old nigga uh, names out in New York. O-N-N's. <laughs> this one? St. Oh. Louis. I just left St. Louis. The Lou. That's where my family S from. S-T-L-3-1-4, really? St. Louis Mo. really? My fat Mike, my dad's side of family. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's why his name is Bernard. <laughs> 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 I just left out there, man. That much, I did not know y'all was famous for Chinese food. Man, we got the best ghetto fried rice. Yo, I'm ghetto telling you. Fried rice. People I mean, well, the the way the, the street name in St. Louis that they call it is actually kind of racist. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they say Nigga I'm saying rice? this no, they they, they call oh. it the Chinaman. Which is oh, which is derogatory, right? Okay. No, that's derogatory. Shit, we call them we call them China, Yeah, the but Chinese that's derogatory. It's really? like them calling us niggas. They do call us niggas. <laughs> <laughs> we love but, everybody. But I, I, so I, I call it ghetto fried rice because mm -hmm. I ain't going to disrespect, okay. you know, the Asian community yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, but, they uh, counsel it's everybody a story, at this show. It's a story where this dude was trying to find the right, you know, Chinese uh, food place, ghetto mm -hmm. fried rice. And he called up and said, yo, is this the Chinaman? 
And and the, the, the dude on the line says, "Is this the nigga man?" Oh, oh for real! <laughs> but he had every right to do that because right. you know. So yeah, same 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 like saying Arab, which is yeah, derogatory, derogatory too. Really? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Arab. You know, Arab is derogatory. You can't really say that. Man, I'm only saying it for the purpose of teaching you because we be calling each other all of that. And yeah, that's all, we talked about that last yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. we call Arab. We Arab and everybody yeah. call him nigga. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. for those of you yeah. out there who didn't know, those two names are derogatory. <laughs> I let you that's know, I put crazy. you on notice. Yeah, that's crazy. I did not know that. Yeah, man. Did you start comedy in St. Louis? No, I didn't. I what mean, did not 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 professionally. I mean, I was an asshole, of course. Uh -huh. uh, but but no, I moved out here, and uh, I didn't know what I was moving out here for to do. I was gonna finish my marketing degree, mm -hmm. and then I, mean, I was inspired by Def Comedy Jam, of course. Uh -huh. Seeing my brother on Showtime at the Apollo, and then seeing him on, you know, um, Def Comedy Jam, and all those first seasons for, uh, of Def Jam. And I moved to L.A. I was going to finish my marketing degree and then ended up, you know, doing comedy. Comedy chose me. I didn't choose it. Mm, that's what you kind of just said, right? Well, she said she, st she stumbled I upon. I fell into my lap. So right. How did, you know, how did that, that's a caption I was going to post today on my picture, actually. That's funny. Comedy chose me. Right. It, it chose you. It was a dare. It was dare me to do uh, amateur night. But, but, but it, it, it was your destiny. It was, it was, it was a sign to you before mm -hmm. you even knew, mm -hmm. before you were even here. You know, so that's that's why yeah. I laugh when you said, "Oh, it stumbled comedy stumbled on me," or "I stumbled on comedy." You didn't stumble. That was your that was your destiny. Yeah. What did you think you would have been if you wasn't a comedian? <laughs> well, my parents want me to be as an engineer <laughs> with this okay. degree they didn't pay for. Mm. Um, yeah, I probably would still just be working in my field. And that's engineer. Mm -hmm. What kind? Civil? I came out here for computer engineer. Com computer engineer. Got I it. came out here for acting though. Like I, okay. I was like, I'm gonna move out here for acting. Mm -hmm. um, right. And then I got dared to do an amateur night. Right. And I was like, all right, I'll do it, whatever. And then, fearless. Yeah. I'm like, because I feel like if you dare me, it's like a challenge. Like if if you dare me to do something where I won't get pregnant or die, it's like why not? <laughs> I was gonna go there too. Like, I was gonna say you wanted him. Yeah. You can get in trouble with a dare. Yeah. Like, like so, why not? So I was like, all right. Yeah. That's that's the easiest way to uh yeah <laughs> you know my big bro manipulate a female <laughs> my big bro I dare you to uh Not that give wild. me some head <laughs> <laughs> like a dare Lou yeah. always gotta go to the <laughs> pull your big out <laughs> pull out <laughs> oh she not. did it y'all <laughs> <laughs> that's hella funny <laughs> you stupid <laughs> you talk about your you can't get pregnant you know that way so that's some yeah. thing I know sense yeah I'm just uh -huh. saying if you drink the babies you know you <laughs> a lot of women get, get a, they lose men off of shit like that yeah off of what off of dares and shit like that one good time can fuck up your whole relationship <laughs> What yeah, you mean? Yeah. Like you in a relationship and another and dude a female dare could be in a relationship and then they get caught up in a dare or something and then it's like, nah, all right, no, come on, now. I dare you to find another nigga now. This shit over, bitch. <laughs> right, that's right. just ridiculous. Don't Not act a ridiculous like you don't know. dare. <laughs> I'm in a relationship with a dude and another dude dare me to do something yeah. and I'll be like, oh, I gotta do it because he dared me. Yeah, no, yeah, that, yeah she ain't, she ain't, no. she don't strike me as that type. <laughs> nah, she don't. But I'm <laughs> saying people do that though. Right. You don't think people do that? I every time I come on this podcast, I tell you I don't know nothing about that life. Okay. I see what you saying. You're a grown ass about woman. That life. That's why I brought you here when God here is he a grown ass man? Louis, I'm on some ignorant shit. God, tell me about how did you get on motherfucking life on the movie, the movie life. life, man? Did I you audition? audition? Audition for real? Yeah, I auditioned, man. I auditioned for the movie Life, man. I'll never forget it too. It was that was um, at the same time I was on a sitcom called Good News, mm -hmm. uh, UPN uh, networking. I went on an audition, man. It was all my friends auditioning too. Miguel Nunez, Bear, Michael Telefero, Goldmouth, rest in peace. But Anthony Anderson. I mean, it was just people that I knew, mm -hmm. you know. And and you know, Martin was already part of the cast, of course. Uh -huh. You know, I I and, and I I started as a PA on the Martin Show, wrote an episode of the Martin Show, uh, and and did a lot of work for the Martin Show. So that was my buddy. But it was it was just fun. It was fun. I had hey, to audition. And you had an agent, or you was just like because you had your night. That a lot of people was like hitting you with opportunities because you was hosting your well night I had an agent though. before I had the night right I had an agent oh, already I, I, can, I mean things happened for me pretty fast I ain't gonna lie mm -hmm. um, and, and it wasn't because of my brother it's because he taught me a lot of the ropes but I still had to go in them auditions myself mm -hmm. it's like me and Tony Rock talks about this like oh your brother but mm -hmm. th they didn't go in the room for us and audition they ain't on stage <laughs> every night telling these jokes so it's, it helped because it helped with you know, having inside knowledge and and how to how to behave and and, and conduct yourself. But no, man, I had an agent and uh, and you know and a manager and mm -hmm. you know I had a team. Yeah, yeah. You uh, for the people that's 
tuning into this episode and they don't know who Guy Tory brother is. It's Joe, Joe Tory. Tory. Yeah. Feel me? Uh, Chicago from the Port of Justice. Most mostly remember. <laughs> Anybody got a Port of Justice t-shirt shit on? Everybody ways. go around the country got a Port of Justice t-shirt on. That is Joe Tory, not Guy Tory. So if you're going to inbox me and say, hey, great job, do it to Joe. Because sometimes I forward. Really? Yeah, people still get us mixed up. I feel like, mm. shit, I don't know. I don't want to say nothing ignorant, but at one point, I, Cause you know I'm young, so I didn't know y'all was even related. Sometimes I knew you from who you was. Sometimes, and I didn't know. sometimes I wish we were. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there are times I think it's a gift thing. and a curse with having a brother that's in the same field as you. Yeah, it is a gift and a curse, and and, and it's a curse because um, the expectation level. Mm -hmm. Like he made it first. That was big shoes to fill. That's why when I first started, I didn't go by Guy Tory. I went by the world famous Guy T. I dropped my last mm -hmm. name, didn't tell anybody we were brothers. Because, one, I knew it was big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. Number three, I didn't want any favors because I'm Joe's brother. Let me earn my shit. Let me earn my stage time. Let me earn, you know, what what, what I'm going to get rather than. But it, it, it's a blessing, too, because, I mean, for the first four years I lived in L.A., mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't have to pay rent. It's rent free. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> cool. Yeah. I mean, that's a big burden lift off. Yeah, what? In L.A., yeah. I came out here with $900 in my pocket and a hoopty. So, but I was hustling. Yeah. I was in them comic clubs every single night, two times a night sometimes, grinding, hustling, you know. That's why after two years of doing, you know, stand-up, I did Def Comedy Jam, which Damn. is crazy. Because Def Jam was in New York at the time, and that's when it was, mm -hmm. you had to be funny. Yeah. yeah. Damn, that's you know what's crazy too. I be hearing these stories with the OGs about like how fast they got on Def Comedy Jam. Some people was like slower, but it's a lot of I be hearing a lot of stories about uh like people like yeah I was doing <clears throat> comedy for three four years and I end up being on Def Jam. Yeah, that's equivalent to the comedians blowing up off the internet and being well, famous. Yes and no. I mean those comics who who did that were in the clubs too grinding like I was. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Every night when you live in cities like Chicago. Live in cities like uh, L.A., live in cities like uh, um, New York mm -hmm. and D.C., there's a plethora of comedy clubs. Mm -hmm. So you can get on stage every night if you want to, just go to different places. There may not be a lot of comedy clubs, but there are rooms mm -hmm. that have a night. So if, you, if you're true to it, then you're going to be in those clubs mm -hmm. every night grinding. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and that's how I did it. I was, forget all this Hollywood you know, parties and all this other bullshit. I saw how fake that scene was. So I was in comedy clubs every night, just grinding, trying to, you know, get out my brother's shadow. Tupac, you saw his cut of my shows. Be like, yo, man, create your own lane, create your own identity, get out your brother's shadow, blah, blah, blah. He was always an early supporter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you feel like it's a difference, um, it's a difference with this generation of comedy where it's at now versus back then. It was still people putting in more work standard wise. Because to be honest, I kind of feel like. I don't even want to say how you feel about the comedy scene right now. I don't feel like it was how it was back in the day with people being physically in comedy clubs. But things change, mm -hmm. and, and and times change. It's different from when I did it from you know my OGs. Mm -hmm. So you know now, the, um, you know with the with social media, I mean I, I I applaud how generation the millennials and Gen Y and Gen Z are creative with their sketches. That's not easy to do. That shit ain't you know. So, <laughs> but to do the stand up part. You gotta get on stage. You gotta get, those, you gotta get those reps in. And if you don't get those reps in, why not have the best of both worlds? Why not have a great social media um, um, presence, but also, you know, couple that with being on stage, getting the grind in, and make all the money. You know, because some of these shows, uh, people are showing up for the social, as Bob Sumner calls them, social medians. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like as, as 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 people are showing up, and a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them don't have the stage time. Yeah. And and after 15 minutes then they're out and they got to do 45 to an hour. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like, I just want this younger generation to get on stage and put the reps in. And you don't think getting the reps is, is when you doing your own shows, you performing and you figuring it out on the go. Yeah, I mean, that's that, that's the way you do it. Mm -hmm. But and, and she she's with this generation. What's mm -hmm. your take on that? Uh, I? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a, I guess I am of this generation, but I feel like I'm not. I started comedy late, though, is what I feel like. Right. So How long have you been doing comedy? Uh, I think it's been six years now. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm you in this generation. You in this generation. Yeah. I've been doing comedy for But I feel 10. like I'm not of your generation, like, age-wise, I'm not of your generation, but, but comedy-wise, I started late. 
Um, but I always started on stage, so I don't. And that's the thing that I've been like, ah, oh, I gotta do social media. I gotta do, and I yeah. hate it. I don't yeah. want to. I want to be on. I'm a stand up comedian. You. Yeah, see, so I love like, that. Own it. I want to be on stage. That's where, like you said, get my reps in. That's where I'm gonna get better. That's where I'm gonna get stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. I don't have much on that on that end. Like and, what I, and what I mean by of this isn't. generation, I don't mean that you're doing what they're doing. Yeah. But you're in that you're in that that group of comedians. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And so that's what I mean. I don't yeah. mean that you're 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 worried about TikTok and worried about you know IG and all that. What I'm saying is this is your class of yeah, comedians, yeah. whether they're getting on stage or not. Yeah. But but you you choose the authentic, the authentic <laughs> stand up route. Yeah. Getting on stage, grinding it out. Writing your jokes out, yeah. I mean, that's that's like that's how you do it. Yeah, because I also don't like. I want any opportunity that I get, I want to be able to kill. So, like you saying, I and it's no shade to that. And you can do both. You know what I mean? Right. If that's what you're doing, absolutely. Um, but I don't want to get, I don't want a headline because I have a certain number of followers. Right. I can't fulfill that role. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. So. And I and social media, I get it. I understand the importance of it. I understand absolutely. how people are getting it's, opportunity it's are. from it. I just haven't really got on that train yet. Yeah, you haven't you know embraced I mean? it. So I'm yeah. kind of like, ah, uh, but. Keep the main thing the main thing, which is the stand Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I get it, but. Hey, Fresno, get your tickets right now. Pull up on me. November 11th. I'm in the city. Don't miss out. I'm telling you, I'm bringing Sonny Bo. I'm bringing Sonny Bo to Fresno, too. He ain't going to perform, but we're going to have a little meet and greet and everything. Louis Belt is performing live. And I'm going to do a little meet and greet with Sonny Bo. So y'all get your tickets right now. Don't miss out. November 11th, Fresno, California. Yes, Law. Yeah, I, it was crazy. Um, I realized, like, it's just, it's a lot of shit that, that's happening now. It's just a modern day. Shit that's been going on, it's just a modern day version of the same shit over and over again. That's why people like the Def Comedy Jam shit. Right. It was just like, it was a... It was a whole bunch of, it was a new wave of comedians. Right. You feel me? And some, you know, hit early, some hit late. So it was both. It, it was a new wave of comedians, but also it was old school. Like your Bernie mm-hmm. Max, your mm-hmm. Cedric, my brother Joe. They've been doing comedy for years. Steve Harvey, mm-hmm. Eddie Griffin. They've been doing comedy for years. And Def Comedy Jam was Moses. Took yeah, a lot of brothers platform. to the promised land. Yeah. It was a new platform because it was basically, basically like we, we weren't really, a lot, uh, you know, getting invited to the white clubs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If we did, we had to dumb down our act or we were told this is what we can and could not say. Def Jam came through and was like, look, I, I'm, I'm sure what sold Def Jam to HBO from, you know, Stan Lathan and and um, Bob Sumner mm-hmm. and and uh, Russell Simmons was like, this is raw, uncut comedy from the hood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Put the kids to bed. You know, mm-hmm. one of the greatest ads I love was used to be in, in the magazine advertising Def Jam. They had a white piece of bread. Right, this plain white piece of bread, and it said "Def Comedy Jam." Anything but, <laughs> and, and that, yeah. simple. Anything yeah. but, and that's what it was. And yeah. it was, it was us. Yeah. And because you know, a lot of cable television wasn't in black households. It was white people watching, and Jewish people watching, other mm-hmm. ethnicities watching mm-hmm. us. So that was that was their introduction to us. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. from from just being raw, uncut. Yeah uncensored straight in your mouth straight no chasing mm-hmm. yeah. that's why it came on late night mm-hmm. on a friday night yeah. for years because it yeah. was it was our authentic self we didn't have to go and water down our act and talk about what we didn't want we, we talk about that nigga shit we wanted yeah. to talk oh, about mamas. that was like y'all instagram version of it was it was a nigga net yeah nigga net why, why do comedians be beefing i be seeing so many comedians beef and i ain't gonna lie my this kind of my first time really like being like having like not words with comedians but like on a right. sense like uh like what i was saying when i was talking not words but like in a sense <laughs> of like like bruh why are you doing that? Like, uh, why are you? Yeah. Why are you taking jokes and shit like that? I, uh, I used to like, cause I come from like a hip hop culture. Like, I never was like, I loved comedy. I always watched, but I didn't come up around comedians. Yeah, I came up around hella yeah. rappers. So it's like when I see comedians like beef in a sense about jokes, I think it was the corniest shit ever. It's not though, because I mean, you gotta realize, man. You know, bits aren't easy to come by sometimes. And sometimes it takes you a while to get that bit perfect. Mm-hmm. You bombed doing that bit. You probably been homeless doing that bit. You probably, 
you know, um, and I'm late getting bumped trying to do that bit. You crafting that bit. You molding that bit into what it is. You put a lot of time, effort, and love into that bit, and that's your bit. And you done done all this motherfucking work to that bit. And someone comes along and didn't do shit and take your bit. They didn't been through nothing and they just took your bit. It's like with women, you know, mm-hmm. when 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 you you, you you date a guy, he's broke, he's struggling, he's <laughs> trying to get his you know his life going on, his business started, he's trying to get you know go, get his career started, get his college degree or his lawyer degree, and then once he gets it and you struggled it with him and held him up. He go get a white girl. He pop up with the white bitch. <laughs> he pop up with the white girl. And you like, what? That's why y'all snap. That's, that's why we snap. That's why we snap white. as comedians. Yeah. Well, I mean, even if another, even if he cheats on, on you, period. You know, because you put in all that way. Mm-hmm. I was there for you. And like with us, it's like that joke was personal to us. And we molded it. And we, yeah. you know, we we did all this. And you just gonna come and take it when it's, it's ready. You didn't put in no work? Yeah. No, nah, man. Now, now, I don't have, now I don't have to cut you. That I understand. I feel like I see a lot of comedians beefing over. I don't know if it's ego, if it's like, well, somebody got the opportunity or somebody, you know, who that, part, that kind of a thing. And that it's part. like, we're all, we're, we're, all, we're all people who comedians were very competitive. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, long gone are the days where we used to support each other. Some of us still do, yeah. but some of us don't now. And it's like, the, I, I, Fat Tuesdays was created because I wanted to share in the success I was starting to have. Mm-hmm. Fat Tuesdays was a comedy night. For those who don't know, I started uh, because there were, were representation from Hollywood in the hood, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I said, I'm going to bring the hood to Hollywood because I was already eating. I already had an Asian manager, but I saw so many other talented brothers and sisters not doing, you know, not getting a look, see? Mm-hmm. Let me create a night in Hollywood so I can I can showcase all of us. Yeah. And 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 it was, it was I, I believe that's why, why God made it successful was because I did it, se- I was selfless with it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about me. It was about, man, yeah. all of us. We can all, it's enough money in this damn town yeah. for all of us. And, what, and this is before it was streaming networks. Mm-hmm. Now there's so many platforms for all of us to eat. We should be even more helpful to each other. Mm-hmm. But back then it was just only CBS, ABC, uh, uh, ABC, uh, NBC, mm-hmm. NBC, and what, and Fox. Mm-hmm. UPN mm-hmm. and one around and you had what Showtime and maybe a HBO, HBO that was it really yeah. but as far as TV and so we we were still kind of like supporting each other yeah. but but now it's so many outlets so many platforms and so many people looking for content you ain't got to be jealous you can root for the next man or next woman and, and get yours too because you yeah. plant those seeds and like Fat Tuesdays planted seeds mm-hmm. Fat Tuesdays planted you know Cat Williams came up through Fat Tuesdays. Nick Cannon came through Fat mm. Tuesdays. Kevin Hart came up through Fat Tuesdays. A lot of can you get, and, get, and look what they're doing now. Mm-hmm. They're doing their own productions, their own movie, Chris Spencer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what they're doing is putting other comedians on. And I have worked for all of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? So the seeds I planted with Fat Tuesdays and those guys came up, they reached back. I've done Wild and Out. Right? I've yeah. done Real Husband mm-hmm. of Hollywood. Yeah. Chris Spencer mm-hmm. put me down on a whole bunch of stuff before. So they, 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 they like, yeah. and that's what it should be about. Yeah. So relationships, you feel like relationships is more, is the most important thing in this, in this business? Absolutely. Relationships, period. Without selling your whole or your soul, though. Uh-huh. Your whole Because this town oh, is, I this, like that this town, this town <laughs> is the tip of the devil's dick, man. If you ain't careful, you ain't got your boundaries, and you yeah. ain't got your, your, mor- your morals and your scruples, then you know you're gonna sell your soul or your whole, and 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 you gone. You just gotta stick with it, and 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 really just grind and trust that that you know that God got God got you. Yeah, He got you, mm-hmm. and you ain't gotta do you know those who do it. Hey, God bless you, but I rather I rather d- get it the old fashioned way yeah. and straight earn it. Not that some people haven't earned it, but yeah. some have earned it and then they lost themselves. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if we get back to like supporting each other, period. Mm-hmm. It's enough rooms in L.A. now to go up in. It's enough streaming networks to get your own show and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I, I just wish we all would be more together than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what's the... So it's very important for you to have a uh, balance in this in this shit. In life, period. Not just in this game. In life, balanced diet. If you, if you, if you party hard, work hard. If you, if you drink a lot, do more self-healing stuff and eat better. Mm-hmm. Balanced budget. If you, if you, if you... Spend a lot, save just as, as much more. Yes. Mm-hmm. So life is balanced, period. Mm. I feel like a lot of comedians don't <clears throat> realize that. I kind of feel like that's why comedians be so like depressed yeah. and shit because yeah. it's like it, in this field, it's not that's not promoted. 
like in a it's sense. Not. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm-mm. yeah, I, and and, and being a woman comic, I know that has to be even more challenging. Yeah, that's where I'm at now, and I I've, I've gotten like pushback from certain people, which I don't care because I feel like I want a whole life. Like, I want a full life. I want yeah. more than just... I can have all the comedy specials, all the TV right. shows. Right, I still want a family. I want a husband. I want kids. I want... You know, I still need time to myself. I like to take a vacation here and there. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like it's not worth it if that's the only thing that you have. And at the same time, like you say, balance. You still got to work hard. But there's so many other things that I want. So that's kind of where I'm at now of, like, I'm still hitting stages, but I also got personal goals that I'm right. like... Because I was even like, yo, I might have to get out of L.A. And then what does that look like for my career? I don't know. But I feel like for my personal life, it might look a little bit better. You know what I mean? So, like, figuring that out. um, And I think that's tough because a lot of women. I had a conversation with a female comedian. I won't say her name, of course. And um, she started crying in the comedy club and was like, my biggest regret is I've been in L.A. for 20 years. And, like, now it's too late for me to have kids. And I was just like, damn. And I started thinking about female comedians. And Melanie Camacho told me this. We did a show together. She's like, you got kids? I was like, no. She's like, go have some babies. She, she's like, right. She's really? like, I don't care what you got to do. I was like, she's like, go back to Detroit. If you need help to that kid is two, three years old, do hit all the clubs in Detroit. She's like, I'm doing a punchline in Detroit next week. And then come back if you need to. But do not let that. And I read Viola she's Davis' right. book. And she talked about that too. Like, Who talked about what book? Viola Davis. Okay. And, um... She talks about uh, how she her I had read her book and Jennifer Lewis book back to back and that Jennifer was like, Lewis St Louis shout out to St yeah. Louis Jennifer Lewis wow. and that had me like because both of them talk about how they didn't have kids and they were like I'm married to my career my career my career and then they got to made it you know what I mean career damn good damn well and then it was like I want kids and I was too late but and but so, you, you know the flip side of that too is though for any woman period a lot of women have a lot of hopes and dreams and projects. And they have kids, Mm -hmm. and they put their careers on hold to raise those kids. Mm -hmm. And I don't think enough husbands, um, I don't think enough husbands take into account what what his child's mom did, put her career Uh and life on hold to raise the kids. So there's two sides of that coin. You can be on the side of man, I'm married to my career, and I I I don't have time to raise the babies, and I wish I would have done it. But there's also times like man, I stay home to raise these kids, and now I've lost myself. I feel like you gotta do both. For me, I look at it like I can do both. Like I can have the kids and have the career. Now, is it going to be challenging? Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, I look at it like both my parents retired. They can come out here and help. You know what I mean? You might have to get... I don't want to... <laughs> Your dad like, I ain't help you. Oh, no. I no. Raise no. Your my, my, my daddy is like, sis, what you doing? Like, I don't care nothing about <laughs> Netflix. When you get married... <laughs> yeah. Um, You know, you know I, he got, I you know he got to pay for the wedding, right? You know the... the my daddy the, the is like, who want... Yes. My daddy like, I didn't have this wedding fun since she was five. Okay? <laughs> he didn't dip it and bought a Harley. Like, I don't like you doing this. Dipped it and bought a Harley. That's a real OG. You better hurry get married before I buy this camera. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I ain't got it. the Harley. I need, I'm gonna get the RV next if you don't you get know married. What? Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I bet you a lot but, of women, yeah, like artists go through that. From oh, absolutely. Singing to yeah. WNBA. But even, it's not even artists, just a, a career woman. And yeah. Sometimes they go through that. I mean, yeah. sometimes you can get yeah. lost in in your career and look up and like, oh man, I'm I'm 40. But I feel you like know? society tells you that you got to have one or the other, and I strongly, wholeheartedly believe you can do both. You can do both. You can absolutely do both. Absolutely. That's crazy. Did you did you do both? Do you have kids? Hey man, I I I'm, I'm a grinder, man, and I I keep my personal life personal, and I and I and I just You're a real OG. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's what OGs fuck with. That's what my pop says. I, I don't, I don't Nobody bring my personal that nigga life. Business. <laughs> and, until I bring it to the stage, then it's then it's public. Now. Other than that, yeah. yeah, I keep it. I keep it. I keep it like a real player. Yeah, yeah. 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 take one to know one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. No, that's crazy though. Yeah, I feel like a lot of men go through that though. We don't speak on it though. For sure. Well, yeah, but not yeah. like the women. We we, we, yeah. we we got it a lot easier than because y'all don't have the time. Women. I mean, y'all because we ain't got to carry it. Yeah, yeah, y'all don't have to carry it. You, so know? you gotta take the time off, yeah, and yeah, y'all yeah. don't have the time frame that we have. Although, right, y'all right. sperm do get bad. Like y'all can technically still have a baby, but y'all sperm as y'all get older, it gets bad. That's the reason yeah. a lot of women have miscarriages and they don't know it's because the man's sperm is bad. Oh, I ain't never heard but, that. But no, yeah, it's you, true. It's because like Abraham was all oh he was seven hundred <laughs> and, and he still was spitting his. <laughs> well, I mean, back then, Sarah was a hundred. Yeah, like, yeah. She was a hundred having a kid. Can, you can have a kid on pre cum. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, y'all don't have the time frame. Y'all don't have to carry it. So you don't have to take no time off right. of work. Y'all don't have, after you had a baby, you six weeks you down bad. Y'all don't have none of that. I wish you know? a nigga would come in there. I need maternity leave. <laughs> they got, a lot of dudes get paternity, like for what? regular jobs. 
My friend, her husband got more time off work than her. See, that's that's <laughs> a sad point. Yeah. Anyway. And I think y'all don't think about it as much. No, we don't. So y'all really, especially because most men feel like, you know, protector, provider. So it's like, right. like he said, grind, grind, grind. Yeah. Because I, I dated somebody that I was like, then what? Like, I, I, I wholeheartedly support you. I think you're, you're super talented. I think you, you know, your work ethic is, but then what? Then what do you, what do you, you going to get to that point? What you got? Yeah. Yeah, I'm being mindful of that now at this point in my life. I'm being mindful. Yeah. You know, I got a whole bunch of shit, but I ain't got too well, much. Well, you, you see a lot of, you see a lot of professional athletes that, if that's that do what that. You, want. you know, uh-huh. they say, you know, they, that life ain't, you know, football, basketball, baseball ain't everything. Mm-hmm. You know, and they and they and they retire. You know, and mm-hmm. and but yeah, I mean, but you're not going to be the best at at both. You're not going to be the greatest comedian, mm-hmm. singer, coach, uh, athlete, and be a great dad, yeah. husband mm-hmm. at the same time. Damn. You got to sacrifice one, yeah. and you got to choose what you're going to sacrifice. You, if, if you're a great coach and a great athlete, a great yeah. comedian, great artist, you you might be suck at it, suck as a dad, or just okay as a dad, mediocre as a dad and a husband. Yeah. If you're a great husband and a great dad, you're gonna be just okay as whatever field you're in. You're not yeah. you're not gonna you're not gonna be great at both. And in my honestly, in my humble opinion, I, I I I agree, and that's why honestly I feel like I've never wanted to be like this big star. Like I I don't I just don't have those goals because of what I know I have to sacrifice in order to be that. Damn. And I don't want to sacrifice. Like family means a lot to me. You know what I mean. But so it's it, like, but but if it's if it's providing a life to be able to ha- for your your family to have a better life, is it worth sacrifice? But are they having a better life if I'm not there? Mm. They're financially having a better right. life. Right. Well, that's well, that's. But what are they about. actually about my money? I know what you're doing. <laughs> Can't make that money. <laughs> So I feel like you know, let me. I want to be good. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, I'm okay with. But not you should want to be great, though. I'm okay with not being because of the sacrifice. No, I'm I trying have to, to be make great. That. I'm That's, working on being great. I'm working on being because I can be a great mom. I can be a great wife. I can be a great daughter, sister, friend. You know what I mean? Like, so the sacrifice is going to take for me to be a great female comedian Did just say comedian you ain't gotta put the female on it but I feel like it's, it's, a it's, a it's a little like different it's a difference but I'm saying not but, in comedians but it's a little different but, but, than being a great female comedian I would have to probably sacrifice having kids all together female comedian that's a superstar come on what do you some, mean, more? some more some Whoopi Goldberg no, yeah. legends. Uh, uh, they uh, legends uh, uh, Wanda, Wanda Sykes, Sykes. Oh man, Adele Givens, yeah, uh, uh, um, Lunell, they, they uh, Laura Hayes, they legends. Come on, man, no, they legends. That's that's, that's greatness. No, yeah. that, they every all of them is yeah. great. So what oh, I'm yeah. saying, I said superstar. They're superstars. You know, Eddie Murphy is a superstar. Kevin Hart is a superstar. Well, th- th- that's, th- that's they're also well, yeah, they came around the same time. But I, I, th- I think there's, I think I they're think superstars. They I think they. Are. No, we can personally have our own opinion. How right. we personally yeah. feel but how about the world them. views them. Yes. Yeah. Um, Whoop is a list. Who? Yeah. Whoop is a list. Yeah. You know, I, I, every time yeah, around, yeah, Lunell, sure. every time yeah. around Lunell, no matter where we go, yeah. people recognize her mm-hmm. all ages, ethnicities, genders. Yeah. You know, and things like that. So. You know, it's it's but but the, it's again how how fucked up the world is wired toward women. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's just not it's that wired to really appreciate and respect, you know, yeah. women on that level, especially on the career level. It's still a fucked up pay gap. You know what I mean? So it's the world. It's the way the world is wired, which is you know fucked yeah. up. Mm. The Morris Comedy Specials. She got some of the best ones. Yeah, oh, yeah. I just oh, worked no. with her this past you know weekend. She's a trainer. She's still yeah. fine. But yeah. not that there's oh, not, not saying there's a difference between like male female comedian. But I'm saying to be, I think to be a great female comedian, you, you might have more. to sacrifice yeah. having kids all together. You might sacrifice to be a goat great and some male chickens comedian. Too. You don't have to. Kevin Hart got four kids. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Right. Now, yeah, he sacrifices time away from them, but him being a male versus being a female makes a difference. Big difference. He don't Absolutely. have to carry the baby. He don't have to, you know what I mean? You don't have to sacrifice having kids all together or depending on where your career pop. Because I know um, there's even actresses that I've talked to that's like, man, I want to have kids but right now I'm, I'm kind of on. I right. can't. And then you look back and it's like, oh shit, my time gone. As right. a man, you could be like, I'm on right now. I can't. And then you can still go back. You go Tony Rock just had a kid. Bras, you know what I mean? Yeah. Get no, I feel you. Tenders. I feel you. What's happening? It's your boy Lewis Belt. This episode is sponsored by High Roller. Y'all go tap in. This motherfucking brand is owned by a black woman. Stop playing. Cannabis, we got all type of flowers and everything. You feel me? So y'all go get the merch. Merch is available right now too. You feel me? Go click the link in the description. Thank you. I love everybody. So it's yeah, it's, that's that's tough. So I think it just depends on what you what you want. I got a friend. We had this conversation. She was like, if I had to pick between career and like family career p 
period. Yeah, it depends and on how you wire it too. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Everybody ain't family that's people. Tough. It's tough if you're a family person. I'm not, I'm not really a family person, uh, to be yeah. honest. So I think it depends. Yeah, you don't even like your brother, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a family nigga. I don't. Nigga. I love him, but I don't like him. Yeah, yeah see, I like, I yeah. like my family. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I keep it 100. I'm keeping it authentic, being my authentic self. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Deal. That's some shit. That's yeah, I shit. think too. Like, and I haven't even really gotten into the road life for real, for real, right? I Ooh, been out. man, I know. I love. I didn't been out a bit, but not like on man, that the, level. The, and even that is like, man. sheesh. As road a woman, life. as a female, as a woman, I, as you get older, it's like. As you get older, but also just what you have to deal with as a woman comedian, period. With shady promoters who trying to mm-hmm. because they book you, they think they can fuck, you know, or they get a hotel key. Um, for you, give it to you, but they got the same hotel key. And if you don't put that lock on your door at night, they trying to come in there and fuck. Um, wow. I can tell you a lot of stories that um, women comedians have told me over the years, or I've seen it happen. Or I remember this one uh, in my documentary. We have a spe- we have a we have a whole segment on it that we had to cut short because some names being mentioned we couldn't. <laughs> but there's one female comedian who got um, who did the show, and and the promoter threw the money uh, at her out the car. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cause he was trying to, you know, renege on, on her her payment, and she was like, "Yo, motherfucker, yeah." He took the money, just threw it at her. I mean, they feel like they can disrespect, you know, mm-hmm. the women comedians, which is which is crazy. And like, that's why I admire you think people. White like, women go through that too. Yeah, well, yeah. B- Brett Butler, mm-hmm. if you read uh, Frank and Ajay's book, <laughs> they, they they do. And but uh-huh. but who was gangster with they shit was Miles Mabley. Mm-hmm. Miles Mabley was about her business when it came to that, uh-huh. right? Yeah. But a lot of comedians, man, um, the, the female comedians. Uh, you know, some of them about their business, and they ain't they, they ain't yeah. fucking around. Some gangsta shit, gangsta shit. Oh, Miles Mabley was about her, yeah. she's about her bitches and about her business. Eh. Damn, <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's how Aretha Franklin was. Right, <laughs> right. So you have that, but 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 male male comedians and promoters try to take advantage of mm-hmm. of the women comedians. Mm-hmm. Man, it's, I've been I've been very blessed to go out with some really dope like Lil Rail, right. Ryan Davis, respectful, yeah, respectful yeah. guys, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, None of that. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had a woman on, on the road with me for a minute. I mean, it's pretty Ricky. Yeah, took yeah, with yeah. me for years. And, um, 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 oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm snapping. But Vanessa Graddick has gone on the road oh, with me. Mm-hmm. And, um, ah, oh, LaShawn. Ivan LaShawn has gone on the road with me. And I prefer, you know, women comedians. One, because... Um, I'm, 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 I'm a, I want, I want you to be you. I mean, you don't mm-hmm. have to give no ass to open for me, mm-hmm. right? Number two is the fact that we're not going to step on each other's stuff. Yeah. And most women come to comedy shows anyway. Yeah. So yeah. we get up there as men and talk all our shit, and there's nobody representing, you know, yeah. the, the woman's point of view. Yep. So yeah. I like having a woman on stage. People say, "Oh man, you think uh, you just can't follow me?" I ain't got a problem following nobody. Mm-hmm. But but the women don't get the opportunity as 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 the guys do. If they do, you know, the headline is trying to fuck. Mm-hmm. Or and and it's just a different point of view that it, I I think should be heard from them because you know I'm I'm headlining I ain't tripping yeah so yeah you know, fly out to all the guys who do take women on the road and and it's no quid pro quo yeah Damn. I've got no shows like that here in L A like oh you ain't got no girl on the show no yeah I hate that there. I hate when it's a whole <laughs> sausage fest yeah man sure. my brother taught me that though when I was doing Fat Tuesdays he's always said make sure you always have at least one woman on the show yeah mm-hmm. and you gotta have at least one it, it, you wanna have multiple sometimes but unfortunately it's not a, at the level of show there's not a lot of and, and this is the sad part a lot of women have stopped doing stand up because of the pressure for men and promoters really? and it's so yes I've talked to one man who was like and who, from what I understand, I've never seen her do stand up. Everybody else said she was funny, but she got tired of guys trying to fuck just for stage time wow. and you all of that. That's in any field with women, though. Uh, yes, it is. But I mean, we're talking stand up right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Cause and and and, and, that, no HR, you and know but that's mean? why there's not a lot of women stand up. Some of them just get tired of it and give up. Yeah, you know. So it's tough. It's tough uh, for y'all. Women running I, the rap game I right now. I haven't been faced with that, huh? Women running the rap game right now. It's oh, cold MCs yeah. out there. They running this shit. You know Big Sexy Red from where you from. You know about Big Sexy Red. <laughs> Her nasty ass. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Big Sexy Red. Yeah. Hey, that's a whole that's a whole lot. Hey, keep doing your thing. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't of my generation. You know, I'm a lot. Queen Latifah, <laughs> MC Light, Roxanne Sante, Moni Love. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm that's my generation of female MCs. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you be, if, if Tina Marie. <laughs> you you be you be connected to a lot of stuff outside of comedy. Cause I feel like that's how I, 
I, I'd have to build a relationship with you, like just knowing like Gary Payton. Gary Payton, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be, you be moving outside of the comedy circuit. I knew That's he what? was. He called me up. Hey, man, I know you. And, and, hey, man, hey, my little homie, Lewis, man, come on and do a spot. Like, and G, Gary Payton's my guy. We 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 two goats. We are two goats. For he's sure. a, he's a he's a goat. Yeah. Point guard, one of the greatest of all time, and I'm a Capricorn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Capricorn. That's, that's my goat status. I'm a Capricorn. No, nah, you a motherfucking goat, man. You, that's crazy. You feel like people can blow up too fast and not be ready for the opportunity? Oh, it happens. It happens. I won't name names, but it's happened. Some people, um, you got to be self-aware. Like she said something earlier is what I used to do. She's not going to headline before she before she's ready because mm -hmm. you can ruin an opportunity for you and you got to know who you are and be honest with yourself a lot of people are not just in comedy but in the world just ain't honest with themselves you got to be self-aware if you ain't ready for that, that that spot don't take it you know what I'm saying like some comedians you know wasn't ready they took the headline the spot and, and what they should have done was just host it mm -hmm. and brought a bunch of funny people around them yeah. and earned and earned, learned their way because they were new to stand up and, and they should have just been hosting, getting yeah. familiar with the stage. Get the, the more times you're on stage, the more reps you get in, the more comfortable you get. Mm -hmm. yeah. So some people try to take that that headliner title uh, because it's, it makes you, oh, I'm the headliner. Who gives yeah. a shit? People just be that funny. way about going up last, just on a regular show. Yeah. yeah. I don't mind yeah. going up first. Some people yeah. like going up first. I'll take the bullets. Oh, All the topics are fresh. Shit. Yeah. Put me up first. I don't but, give a damn. But you, a, but, you, but you a host, though, so you, you that don't phase you. A lot of well, comedians but, but, are scared of that, that right, cold crowd. Right. Right, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Feed me to the wolves. Yeah, feed me you to a different type of nigga up there when it's cold. When it's cold, <laughs> I, 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 I had, I, uh, not headline. I hosted the Maxwell Jill Scott tour back in 2010, mm -hmm. and and I was, I was the one going up first. It was no mm -hmm. nobody coming on before me as they walking in and taking their seats. Mm -hmm. And these white people uh, promoting this show. So when the show said start at seven, they had me on stage at 6.59. Damn. And these people still getting in. To, and then we talking about <laughs> Madison Square Garden and the Staples Center. We talking about big venues. Mm -hmm. So they walking in and, and taking seats. But that, that was my job. Yeah. It was it, it, it was Is fun. Is it harder to perform in front of big venues like thousands and thousands of people or smaller crowds? You know what's funny? I do well in smaller crowds. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had shows where six people show up, eight people show up, and it was the best show. Mm -hmm. Like, I did shows where it was bad weather in town, and they told everybody to stay in, but a few people came out. I'm like, no, the show canceled. Promoter, like, I mean, or the, the or club, I'm like, no, we're going to do it. I said, you know, if I've touched this mic, I, I got to get paid. <laughs> yeah. Mamas. And so it was like, you know, hurricanes or tornadoes or blizzards where they shut the city down, and some people still trickled out and came, and, mm -hmm. and you got to get people to show. I don't care if it's eight or 8,000. You get them motherfuckers. You don't punch the motherfuckers who there. You know what I'm saying? You give them the best show you can possibly give. And I've had sat down on the stool and had conversations and worked out new bits that I probably wouldn't have done if the place was full. Yeah. But in that setting, you got to be able to adjust and adapt. You know, some yeah. people go on stage with a small audience and be mean. Why do you mean to people who came? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why you mean to them? They showed up. Be mean to all these other empty chairs out this motherfucker. But you don't need to be mean anyway. It's just if it's bad weather and people don't want to come out, they don't want to come out. So wow. it, it depends on who you are. It, there's different mediums and energy levels when you do certain shows. I've had mm -hmm. comedians call me up who've been in the game for years who are playing arena for the first time or playing a the theater for the first time. Yeah. And they say, what do you do? It's different. When you play in a comedy club, the laughs are immediate because it's right there. It's intimate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When you're playing a theater, you got to change your timing a little bit. You got to, you got to, you got you can't go so fast because the laughs going to take longer to come to the stage. If you think mm -hmm. they're going to be as immediate, as they are in a comedy club, it can throw your timing off because you think they're not laughing. Yeah. Now you don't hurry to the next joke and step on your laugh. So now they're cutting the laughs off. When you play an arena, then you really got to wait even more, mm -hmm. more so than the theater. Mm -hmm. So it's like because the laugh's going to take a while. Plus, if you're in an arena, the ceilings are higher. So the laugh's got to take, it's going to take a while for the laughs to go up, bounce yeah, off the ceiling, and up. come back. Mm -hmm. Comedy outside sucks. Comedy outside sucks because number one, sometimes it's daylight, and comedy is an intimate thing. Yeah. So you don't want people, you know, people in the audience don't want to yeah. see other people see what they laughing at. Yeah. But number two, those <laughs>, laughs escape and they don't come back down. They're not bouncing so off or nothing. Yeah. For young comedians out there, when you do a club, a theater, an arena, and outside, you got to adjust your timing. Slow yourself down with each bigger venue you have to slow yourself time down your timing has to change mm. yeah and it's crazy you shared that uh, on here because you told me that yeah. you told me that before um i don't even know if you remember but i asked you uh about something like that like hey i'm finna perform here it's big it's right. a theater right and uh 
Yeah, you told me that same exact thing yeah. that you know it's gonna take longer to last. So right. just be patient. Just patient. And yourself. that shit really worked. Yeah, that shit really Patience works. Stuff. That's real. They laughing. Yeah, it's just it's just delayed reaction. Yep. It's got to get to you. Yeah, and some people get rattled and think they think they bombing. Throw the whole timing off, the booty hole tighten up, and they, <laughs> they you know, and they, and and they were doing well, but yeah. didn't, but but they don't realize. It. You, yeah. you don't feel like you did that in your career earlier in your career though, in, in the sense of going out there too soon because I didn't heard the stories about you going on uh, the road, you was the first host of Kings of Comedy. Right. And the reason why you backed out of it or whatever happened. I left. You left because. Voluntarily. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the material? No, well, two things. One, um, I left the tour, I announced it on Tavis Malley BET Tonight. Mm -hmm. And they were all shocked when I said, yo, that, that tour grew me up because I was a comic. By the time I finished that tour, I wanted to become a comedian. And I say it all the time. A com- it's different between a comic and a comedian. A comic says funny things, a comedian makes things funny. And I saw Steve, Bernie, and Cedric go on stage every night for shows and destroy. And I had jokes, but I didn't have an act. Mm-hmm. Big difference. So I left the tour to go hit the clubs. I wasn't doing the improv and funny bone circus, you know, that I that I went today. Mm-hmm. And that's how you build your act. That's mm-hmm. like that's the gym. That's where you put in all those reps. And then <clears throat> and then that's when you take it on TV or a bigger venue. But the other thing is I booked a TV show um, mm-hmm. that was paying me 30 grand a week back then. Damn. Yeah, I was, hey, I was getting was yo, that type of money. Like, man, and this is UPN. So uh, imagine what a major, <laughs> another network would have been. But I did a TV show called The Strip that was on UPN where I played this Vegas detective. Mm-hmm. So that was like, okay, 30 grand a week? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because you've been in a lot of hey, movies. I was watching Pearl Harbor and you was in that. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck God Tour you doing in of Pearl Harbor? all the Harbor? movies. <laughs> Random as fuck. But I was like, damn, this dope. It was right. Michael Bay, man. Michael Bay. I, it's funny because I had, uh, I did a Michael Bay commercial. He, he was directing this, these Mercedes Benz commercials. I went in for the audition and booked mm-hmm. it. And it no, it was no lines or anything. But I'm like, I'm gonna work with him one day, mm. and 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 I want to see how he directs. And it, this so happened that that weekend, shot the commercial like on a Thursday, Friday. That Saturday, I went to see a movie in Westwood, and Michael Bay was seeing the same movie. And we were like, hey, hey, what's going on? Or whatever. And then when when um, the audition came up for um, um, Pearl Harbor, he was like, oh. Hey, okay, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead and be lying. But basically, you, you got it. You're good. Just mm-hmm. boom. So it was cool. And he let me ad lib and everything. Mm, that's, that's all off of relationships. All oh, relationships. I got to get yeah. better with that. Yeah. <laughs> I think our generation no, need to get better with I, But you got to be I careful. I know that I have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. That's why I said I'm, I'm lucky. I guess blessed. I can call it blessed. Um, that that hasn't happened to me. But I also think... People, for people who know me or know of me, I feel like I carry myself in a certain way that a lot of people don't try that. Because I've had female comedians say, like, what are you doing, dudes? And I'd be like, oh, niggas don't say that to me. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. even. I ain't saying nothing for moments. Like, I've had somebody like, oh, sometimes you got to flirt. And I'm like, no, because flirting lets you think it can yeah. be something more. Right. I want to be very clear right. that that's oh, not mama. what it is. Right. You know? Absolutely. It, but niggas um, be flirting just as much as these girls. With each other, niggas, what you mean? Yeah, oh, that's why they be getting opportunities. It just ain't uh, you who ain't got to flirt. Uh, yeah. They be trying to nigga yeah. fuck around. I don't fuck around, uh, nigga. So, <laughs> nigga, if I'm be on the movie, I'm be on it. If yeah. not, but I'm no, not, like genuine, not. like yeah. That's what he like, said. Your soul or your whole. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah that goes for men and women hey, in this industry. Yes, it does. Oh, mamas, nigga. Sometimes you see me not in some shits because, nigga, I'm <laughs> my whole soul is good. Nigga, I like that. I'm gonna I'm put that in my <laughs> pocket, man. That's when they come up. Hey, Lewis, how you doing? They start massaging your shoulder. Hey, man. <laughs> hey bro, hey, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I had a massage already. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's no. important. Yeah, Tacoma. I'm on the way. Y'all been asking me for hell alone. I'm on the way. Get your tickets right now. November 12th. I'm in the city. Get your tickets. I love everybody. I'll see y'all soon. Damn. Just, no. How, what do you think? To circle back to um, when you were saying like in the comedy clubs, that's where you build your act. What is your like rule of thumb, or what do you think in terms of like how long should a person use the same material? Man, let me tell you something. My material, my kids. I'm gonna love them forever. Yeah. And if I hadn't put it on TV, then I'll still kind of use it. Or it may be part. I may have put part of it on TV, but not the whole joke. Mm-hmm. So I'll do the whole joke again, so you can see the full. Like when I did the Snoop Dogg thing, right? The set I did is really a 15 minute bit. But I only gave me five minutes. I was like, five minutes, man. I'm a, mm. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a beast in this game. Five minutes, they're going to pay you this. Oh, five minutes it is. I'll do yep. it four minutes, gotcha. 30 seconds if you want me to. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so some of that material, 
I do in the longer form because I hate yeah. to I hate to get rid of that whole bit yeah. as dope because I only, I only said five minutes of it. So um, it depends. It depends. Like I, I, my rule is sometimes you know once I put it on TV then it's dead. But it everybody's different. Some people say oh I don't you, I don't you tell them the same jokes. Some jokes are timeless. Some jokes are, yeah. are audiences yeah. favorite. I got this one bit I close on sometimes I quit doing it trying to get out my act. When I don't do it people get mad because mm. it's kind of an improv bit a. a, 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 a audience participation type of mm-hmm. thing so you never know what's going to happen mm-hmm. and then some of the jokes I just like doing and if they yeah. still get the hell of a response shit, why not yeah yeah. yeah. I mean I feel you that, like I don't know if you I don't know if you post like any of your jokes online because that'd be the thing too people yeah, want you to post yeah. bits every day and then it's like well right. god damn now y'all done got right. 45 minutes worth of well, what material. you can what can do is because I'm learning to do this what you can do is with that is 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 post the, the, the crowd the crowd play Maybe okay. if you do interaction yeah, with the yeah. crowd, the word, do, yeah, or, or, or or do do bits up front, knowing when you're taping that you you're gonna do a bit that you that you even do anymore or something. Mm-hmm. But but there's ways to do it without burning your material. Because once you once you put it on this on 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 the internet, mm-hmm. then you go to do your special. These streaming platforms or networks won't want that bit. Mm. And that bit could be a great glue to, to connect your whole act, or it could mm. be a signature bit. And now you got to take that out because it's had a million views already, yeah. and it kind of doesn't, you know, you got to find a new way to make you know your set connect. Mm-hmm. So you just got to be careful with that. But that's but that's di- everybody's different. Mm-hmm. You know what worked for you may not work for him or me or you know Cedric or somebody else. So it's 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 just your interpretation. If they still laughing, shit. <laughs> why not mama's yeah if they still laughing why, why, why get rid of them do have for me like some favorites that I love yeah I got favorites I love yeah. to do some and shit. I love seeing other comedians I ain't gonna lie yeah, yeah yeah I be dropping my shit now cause niggas gonna say my jokes so I like might as well just put it out them? there oh but if it's not some, saying all but, but what you, I'm saying is yeah. that you if you if you building something you building something and then somebody take your shit this happens from from the lowest level or the highest level, yeah, I just seen it happen to some of our peers. Yeah. I had a white female come in and take one of my bits. I did it. On, I did it on Comedy Central two or three years prior to them taking it, and they actually took my bit uh, and did it on a on a show that I was doing. I was like, <laughs> and I was just like, I already did the bit. It's already documented, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I'm not gonna punch, you know, her in the mouth. And if it was a dude, he may get punched in the mouth. But you know, I don't hit women unless it's doggy style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's hella <hell> funny. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Luke, like I'm about to take that. Yeah, I'm gonna take that one too. I'm gonna take that for sure. I like that one. Oh I like that. Yeah, now that that's for sure. Just got you got to have them receipts for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then yeah. the people want to see it too. I feel like comedians get to see everybody jokes first, and then if you mm-hmm. keep withholding it from the people, it's like shit. Yeah, you 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 showing the industry all your the good shit, and then. And, and, and there's two ways to look at that. The people don't even know what the fuck you say. There the, are the two ways to look at that. One, yes, you can do that. That's your favorite bit. But also, you can release it, and there's more creativity coming from where that came from. Yeah, if, if, if this is what your gift is, and you're walking in your purpose with your gift, and you're creative, then, then, then it's like the writing process. The writing process when you're writing a joke doesn't start until you can't think of anything else. You write a bit, you, you dump everything in that you can about that bit. Everything. You can't think of nothing else. Throw all that shit away, and that's when the creative process starts. Damn. That's when it really starts. Because everything you came up with already, then these motherfuckers in the audience already beating you to the punchline, even if they ain't heard the joke before. Mm. They see it coming. Yeah. You know, and then you once you once you brainstorm that shit out and get all of it out, then the creative process really starts is when you can't think of nothing else. And that's mm-hmm. when you gotta go into overtime with your brain. And that's any any type of creativity. Mm-hmm. Whether it's jokes, whether it's a script, whether it's a song, whether it's a uh, an invention, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just you know, throw that shit away and that's when the creative process gets going. Damn. Mm-hmm. That's some game. That's some game. We're gonna have to end it on that. <laughs> I was cold. <laughs> Keisha, you got anything you want to ask before we wrap this up? Because this, um, this knowledge that you can't I know. Get look, I'm over here like, I should have put my phone on the court on low. <laughs> I'm remembering it all. Um, no, I think I think we touched on... Yeah, he dropped, you dropped some game. I ain't yeah. going to lie. Hey, man, hey man it's, 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 people drop game on me. So it'd be wrong for me not to share it in the art that I love doing yeah. and, and want to preserve comedy for the future. 
You know, I, I love seeing the young y'all young guns coming up. I'm a fan of comedy, so why wouldn't I be a fan of you all? Fair. No matter what generation you in, I'm a fan of comedy, and you in this fraternity sorority. Then, then I got game to give you. I'm gonna give it to you. I ain't gonna hold on to it unless you're one of those comics who, like, oh, gee, you Def Jam. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't shit no more. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Then I'm not going. Bible says don't get pearls to swine. Mm -hmm. So if, if if you want the knowledge and wisdom, it's here. I'm gonna give it to you. Mm -hmm. But if you like like this about it, I'm gonna let. You, Cause I talk to the black comics on the road. Mm -hmm. When I'm doing a club a city and the black comics come around mm -hmm. and I see them doing something wrong or whatever, I I I get no offense. I don't talk to the white guys. Yeah, they should because they because they get the they get opportunities that we don't get still to this day. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so the, the young brothers, mm -hmm. I talk to and a lot of them I talk to them because a lot of them are hating themselves. Like they're doing shit, and it's the reason I see why the club isn't booking you. They want to book you, mm -hmm. but you, you you doing some nigga shit, or some or some disrespectful mm -hmm. shit, or some unprofessional shit, and you think the club hating on you? No, it's you. Change yeah. this, that, then that, and that, and boom, 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 boom. Quit thinking you all that, and you. You know, you gotta be able to play all crowds. You gotta play the game a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Only, only on, on my shows, a lot of my cities are diverse audience. Can you play to a white audience, conservative audience? Can you play to an Apollo type audience? Mm -hmm. Can you play to a professional audience? Meaning that business professionals and things like that, corporate gigs and stuff like that. So you gotta put yourself in any situation to be that fish out of water to make sure you grow. Mm -hmm. Like I put myself in situations to fail so I can win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I set myself up to fail so I can win. So you 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 got to do that sometimes. Otherwise, stay in your little comfort zone, stay in your little punk ass city, mm -hmm. and and be and be city famous. <laughs> yeah. And because you bring your ass to L.A., you bring your ass to New York, you bring your ass to Chicago, but you yeah. you know big fish in a little pond, you're gonna get your feelings hurt. That's how I came. You gonna get your I was feelings the hurt. Nig in the bay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Came out here, and niggas don't yeah. give a fuck about. Check your ego all at the motherfucking border. Yeah. Get, call ice. We're gonna call ice on your ass and take you back across the border. <laughs> if you if you if you brought your ego with you. So <laughs> so I'm telling you right now, if it's young comics out there, you come to LA, you better have thick skin. That's why we haze you. Yeah. I be on the road in these green rooms hazing these little young comics. Mm -hmm. and the guy is mean. Now guy guy getting ready for LA. Cause you've been outside on, on the night that you co host improv on Monday on Monday's uh at the improv and that sidewalk ain't no punk. We out there, and you from out of town thinking you tough. We out there hazing you with jokes, and you get sensitive and want to fight. I talk about how much money you make. You the motherfucking lost. You better you, you better get you better stomp with the big dogs. You on that sidewalk, no, period. Yeah. Real. So you come to L.A. We don't give a fuck who you are. It's where you at. Damn, mm. that's mm. some shit. <laughs> Hey, God motherfucking tour in the building, man. I appreciate you man, coming thanks through, Thanks for the invite, man. I appreciate you having You're me. a legend, man. Off tops, man. Keisha E., appreciate you coming good, through. Good, good being yeah. on the show with you. Yeah, good I'm seeing you smile. You understand me? <laughs> yeah, so make sure y'all tap in. It's the, another episode Balance. of Kelly Kickback, man. Had them babies, but had them jokes, too. <laughs> man, have yeah. both. Strong enough to bear them. Make a joke about the babies. babies. Right. Oh, mama, that's so a whole, bad that's ass a whole kids. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Kelly Kickback, man. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. I love everybody. <laughs>